Hello, I'm James Ingram for AutoControls.org. Uh, in this video, we're going to do a demonstration of the Railroad Concepts Station Master, uh, an electronic unit for automatic control of uh, model trains. Uh, a gentleman in Oceanside, California, named Curtis Rokes, has been making these and other similar units since around 1992, uh, continuously updating them all this time. The uh, Station Master was tested in Garden Railways magazine back around early 1992 by tester Stan Rubenstein. Uh, these units were designed for large scale. They can be seen on the uh, Railroad Concepts website on the YouTube videos on the Railroad, Railroad Concepts website uh, operating on uh, Curtis's own large scale outdoor railroad. Uh, and these units work generally in smaller scales also. The Station Master does a lot more than what I'm going to show here. I'm just demonstrating two of the simplest things you can use it for. Uh, in this case, uh, an automatic station stop where the train comes around the loop and stops at a, uh, in a appropriate, the appropriate spot for where the station is. And the second thing being two train automatic control on the same loop. Th this unit can also be combined with the uh, Railroad Concepts Yard Master for automatic passing, siding, control, and lots of other stuff. If you see me deviating in this video from the Railroad Concepts instructions, please follow the Railroad, instruction, the railroad Concepts instructions and not me. In, in my opinion, the technical capabilities of these Railroad Concept units are way ahead of people's awareness and understanding of them. This, is, this video is an attempt to expose them a little bit more and acquaint you with them a little bit better. The challenge when you're new to these devices, uh, like I'm new to them, is to start thinking the way the device works so you can kind of understand it. And uh, one final comment, please note that this is the unofficial video. The videos you see on the Railroad Concepts website are the official videos. All right, here we are looking at the uh, Station Master up close. As I mentioned, this has a microprocessor, microprocessor inside of it, and it can do many things. And an important point to mention, this is designed for use with DC current on the track. It won't work with DCC current on the track, and it won't work with AC current on the track. It's, it's designed for use uh, with trains that run on DC current, which is most you know, Garden Railway and S and H O gauge trains. Now about the terminals and the control knob, these are terminals one through six on the left side. Uh, one and two are the what he calls the DXL sensor, that is the deacceleration sensor, that's typically a reed switch. Uh, these terminals are normally open. When a reed switch is connected across here and closed, it'll activate the, the D cell sensor. Uh, Terminals 3 and 4 in the middle are, are the Axel sensor or the acceleration sensor. This may or may not be hooked up. Uh, you use this for block control. But again, and typically again, a reed switch would be put across there. The uh, stop sensor, I'm not using for these demos, but that's used for more advanced uh, operations. So these w terminals 1 through 6 on the left or for sensors, and he cautions you don't hook the track power up to these because uh, it can damage the circuitry because these are meant to be sensitive low voltage uh, terminals. So you don't want to be jamming 12 volts of track power in there. That's really the only thing you got to be careful of. Now over on the uh, right side, terminals uh, 7 and 8 up at the top here are your outputs to the track, which you can see aren't hooked up. Terminals 9 and 10 in the middle are, are trigger, trigger outputs, which I'm not using. Those are more advanced. Terminals 11 and 12 down on the bottom, that's where you hook your uh, track power in. Now you can see this unit, uh, I've, all I've got hooked in is two, two wires right now. forgot to mention this knob here you can turn clockwise or 
counterclockwise. That, I believe he calls that the control knob. Normally this is in the full clockwise position for running. You typically, you, when you're programming this thing, which we'll talk about later, you turn it back to counterclockwise to get it in the program mode. Uh, and there's actually an advanced programming mode. You, it, you put it in the middle. Uh, and in these two lights at the top, the status lights, the uh, one on the left is a red one and that's an LED that normally will be not lit. It basically flashes when one of these sensor terminals is activated. It tells you typically that an engine ran over a, a reed switch or somebody pushed a push button if you have a push button hooked up to the sensors. But normally this flashes only only when one of these sensor terminals is activated. The terminal on the uh, the right, I believe, is called the status LED. You can see it's currently green. This may be off, or it may be green, or it may be red, or it may be blinking green, or blinking red, or uh, blinking both red and green at the same time, depending on what's happening uh, with the unit. I've got this station master connected to a uh, LGB power pack which is sitting over here. Uh, it's probably set to put out about I'm guessing 8 or 10 volts. This could be pretty much any uh, DC transformer but you can see I'm just bringing uh, two wires going through a knife switch going and coming over with two wires uh, which go to the input of the uh, station master. So this, this these two wires coming in on the right is the uh, transformer input and like I say, that's simple, simple DC. Now, is when you take this thing out of the box when it comes in the mail from the factory, uh, it's probably going to be set set for station stop operation. That's the way mine was. So, I'm going to connect track power to this unit, and you can see this status light is blinking green that means it's accelerating now you can see it it accelerated now it's solid green which means cruising that means the train's going around the loop and it will stay cruising until the d d cell sensor the stop sensor is activated normally this would be the engine with a magnet going over top of a reed switch to just demonstrate that uh without having anything hooked up i'm going to close terminals one and two with this wire and when I get these this connected you should see the red light flash there it went that may I went that's equivalent of going over the uh, D cell sensor and you can see the blinking red means the train is slowing down now it's blinking at one per second approximately that means it's pause this is set for about five seconds pause now you can see it went back into blinking green which was acceleration and then solid green which was cruise so you can basically test this thing or put it through its paces with doing nothing more than just hooking up the two wires to terminal 11 and 12 for the transformer power let's go through that cycle again again i'll try to uh, close terminals one and two which simulates the train going over a reed switch you can see the uh, LED on the left flash. Now we're deaccelerating the flashing red. Now we're going into pause mode. They're about one per second. It's paused. There, but now we're accelerating again. Flashing green means accelerating. Solid green means we're cruising. I've got these uh, at times adjusted fairly short since I've got a short loop here. You can make these much longer. In other words, the uh, the de the de deacceleration rate can be much slower for a much longer deacceleration. The pause time can be made longer if you like to make it sit longer. The uh, acceleration time can be made much longer so the train will accelerate much more gradually. Uh, but I, like I say, I've got a short loop, so I'm keeping these. I'm making it deaccelerate and uh, accelerate fairly quickly. Okay, I'm going to go into the uh, programming of this unit for a, uh, an automatic station stop. So right now we're in the run mode, and I'm going to turn this control knob counterclockwise to put it into the program mode. You can see, or you may be able to see the green light went out when I did that. Now we're in program mode. And typically how you program this, you you uh, 
close a, a couple of uh, terminals. Now I'm using a wire. You also, if you had reed switches, you could hold a magnet on the reed switch wherever the reed switch was located. The easiest way with nothing connected is to use a wire. You hold a wire across here and you count blinks on the uh, status uh, light. And the number of blinks tells you what your value is. Typically, one blink is a short value, and it usually goes up to 10 or 11 blinks for a long value. The first thing I'm going to do is program uh, terminals 1 and 2. I'm going to use terminals 1 and 2 to program the deacceleration. I'm going to go for the second quickest deacceleration, so I want two blinks. One blink would be the shortest uh, acceleration, the quickest deacceleration. Two is a little longer. If you had a, a big, long stop area like 20 feet to stop in, you might go for five blinks or seven blinks. You can go up to about 10 blinks, I think. So we're going to uh, close this terminal and watch the, the red LED lights that flash when I have it closed. Now I got three blinks there. That's too many, so I'm going to redo it. You can see it echoes back to you how many you do, apparently, when you take the wire off. It, it, it happens fairly quick. One, two. There's two blinks. Now it echoed back two blinks. So hopefully we got the, the deacceleration program for the second quickest deacceleration. Now the center pair of terminals three and four, which is the acceleration sensor, we're going to program that for the fastest acceleration. So I just want one blink on that. So I'm going to touch together terminals three and four and try to get one blink. Now I got two blinks that time. I'm going to do it again. There, I've got one blink. Now pause time use terminals 5 and 6, which is the stop sensor terminals. If you if you program it for one blink, that's no pause at all. It, it stops and starts right back up again. If you do two blinks, it stops, starts, stops for about five seconds or so. So I'm going to do two blinks, give it a fairly short pause. There you can see it blinked two blinks when I held the wire across terminals 5 and 6, and then it echoed back two blinks. So this thing should be now programmed to do an automatic station stop for one train. Let's look at this setup a little closer. Here's our transformer. It happens to be a LGB transformer, but can be pretty much any DC transformer. I go through a a knife switch just so I can turn it on and off without having to change the speed setting, but that's kind of optional. But uh, two wires coming out of the knife switch into a terminal block, and from there two wires directly to the track, that's what these are, and two wires to the input of the uh, station master. Now I've got a block in this loop about where that yellow yardstick is laying. Uh, an important point to note, if you're going to use this thing for just one train operation, you don't really need to have a block. The station master be, can be connected to the directly to the loop and it, it raises and lowers the voltage on the whole loop. But since I'm headed here with this demo eventually to doing two train operation, uh, we need to have a block in order to control two trains. So this demonstration layout does have a block, but for one train operation, just keep in mind that you don't have to have a separate block. You can let the station master control the whole loop. Okay, here's the block again. It's about 29 inches long. It's, it starts it starts and stops at about the length of this broken uh, yellow yardstick. I got a very crude block. I've just got a gap cut in this American Flyer track. The, the one gap is here, and the uh, second gap is back here. So that's our block. We'd like to have a longer block, but due to my configuration of the layout, I can't conveniently get one unless I chop up some of the S-helper track, and since you can't get this stuff anymore at the moment, since 
uh, saying the con rather abruptly stop manufacturing is for all the manufacturers. I'm, I'm reluctant to chop up any more of my valuable S helper track. But this, this thing does a pretty good job with this 29 inch long block. If you watch the uh, videos on the uh, Railroad Concepts website, his own videos, you see him using a much longer block on his outdoor layout. And you can see how we can get a really gradual deacceleration. Now here's the same two wires coming into the uh, station master as before on terminals 11 and 12 from the transformer as we had when we were demonstrating it earlier. Now there's three additional wires hooked up here. This white wire which comes out on the plus terminal which is terminal number 7. He's got all the terminals numbered and the plus are marked on the uh, little label on the front. But the plus terminal is number 7. That white wire is coming out and going down here and it's going in through this terminal block into the the right rail of, of the of the gap track. In other words, this is our stop block from here to here, and that white wire is feeding power into our stop block from the station master. So what it allows to do, it allows the station master to raise and lower the voltage on this stop uh, block to control the train in here. And one important thing to note. Uh, if you look at his diagram on his website, he shows this white wire, the plus wire, running to the left rail uh, because he's thinking in terms of large scale and large scale on large scale trains. The left rail is the plus rail. However, the National Model Railroading Association NMRA standards uh, call for the uh, plus rail to be on the right rail. So for uh, o gauge, 2 rail, S gauge, H O gauge, and N gauge, the right rail is a plus rail. So in this case, I'm taking the wire into the right rail. But again, just repeating his diagrams will show the left rail because he's got his diagrams drawn for large scale, and large scale does not follow the NMRA standard. Okay, terminals number one and two. You see these two red wires, they're going out to the reed switch. It's connected to the, the deacceleration sensor. And the reed switch is, uh, this happens to be a railroad concept reed switch. It doesn't have to be a railroad concept reed switch. Any reed switch by anybody, pretty much as long as your train activates it, will work. But uh, we can just slide these railroad concept reed switches right in under the track. And that connects back to terminals one and two, the deacceleration sensor. I used red wire because the red wire is supposed to give you the idea that it's a you know a stop red wire for stop. Um, and as I mentioned before, these reed switches are normally open, but they they just close momentarily when an engine with a magnet goes over top of them. And when the engine with the magnet goes over top of them and momentarily closes them, that's when you see this red light blink, which you'll see when hopefully during the operation. Uh, somehow you got to put a magnet on your engine. These uh, S gauge diesels by S helper service, get it up to the camera at the right angle, they've got magnets right here that are hot glued onto the front coupler. Another way to get a magnet on your train is to, uh, in S gauge, you can use these Lionel by American Flyer cars and the metal trucks, you can stick a magnet right on the bottom of the truck, the magnet just holds itself there and it doesn't interfere with the rotation of the cup of the uh, truck. Here you can see is a, the uh, thing without a magnet, but you can put magnets on these. For, for um, in either, either way works fine for automatic block operation. In, in this case, like I say, on the 2S helper diesels I'm using, the magnets are hot glued on the front coupler. So what's going to happen is the engine will come around this way with the magnet on it. When the magnet crosses over the reed switch located right here, the, uh, that, that will activate the deacceleration sensor on the station master, which will start this thing ramping down. So as it enters the block, it'll be ramping down in speed. It'll stop somewhere in here. It'll pause for about five seconds, and then the station master will start ramping back up and gradually accelerate it out of the block. And, It'll come around the loop the next time and the same thing will happen all over again.